Hi there, welcome back to my channel. My name is Adeli Kebabalala and today we are going to be doing an IELTS speaking practice. This time around I'm making use of the Cambridge IELTS book 13 and this is test 2, speaking test 2. You'll find it on page 53. So the first question says, are you happy to be the age you are now? Are you happy to be the age you are now? To respond to this, I would say something like, um, yes, I like the fact that I'm in my late 20s and despite being a mother, there's so much that I can do. Okay, <laughs> so yes, I gave my yes response and I gave reasons why I love my present age. So the second question, when you were a child, did you think a lot about your future? When you were a child, did you think a lot about your future? Yes, I did. Um, as a young girl of nine, I remember um, thinking about how to be like to be a newscaster and then have everybody see me on TV. So, yes, I look forward to what life would be like in the next 20, 30 years from that time. Okay, so there you have it. Um, I'm actually thinking as I'm talking. So, um, but if you're following, you notice that I'm using the right, you know, um, tenses for this because the question was a past tense question. So when you were a child, did you? So I'm trying to maintain the past tense. Okay, the next question now. Do you think you have changed as you have got older? Do you think you have changed as you have got older? Well, I definitely agree that I've, um, you know, I've experienced a number of changes as I've, you know, moved into my late 20s. I know that my sense of um, style as in fruit. <laughs> I now wear more dresses than just skirts and blouses and then um, I have an um, expanded view of life. So I believe that um, the things I picture now, I you know, I, I have this um, broad view about them. I'm more optimistic and more adventurous <laughs> if I can say that. Okay, so I'm trying to flesh up my hands. I'm trying to add more i'm not just saying yes or saying no i'm trying to you know provide more information as i answer the questions now the fourth question says what will be different about your life in the future what will be different about your life in the future if you ask me i know that um as i get older i'm definitely going to be busier with my children and my family Apart from this, because I have a writing career, I'm hoping to, you know, um, develop further. I know that I'll be busier, you know, with writing, with projects, and, you know, definitely I will do more networking as time goes on. So, yes, um, that this is what I think my life would look like in, say, five or ten years from now. Okay, so um, I did not just say yes. I also try to paint a picture of what I think my future would look like. So when you answer part one question, your goal is to, yes, you want to answer the question, but you also want to say a little more so that the examiner can evaluate your ability to express yourself, which of course is what they want, you know, as far as the fluency and coherence um, um, criteria is concerned. Now, you know, in speaking, the four criteria are fluency and coherence, lexical resource, grammatical range and accuracy, and pronunciation. So I'm trying to pay attention to the four of them as I speak. Okay, so let's go to part two. The question here says, describe a time when you started using a new technolog technological device, e.g. a new computer or phone. Describe a time when you started using a new technological device, e.g. A new computer or phone you should say what device you started using why you started using this device how easy or difficult it was to use and explain how helpful this device was to you okay so as i'm thinking about the question um i'm thinking about this laptop <laughs> i'm thinking about my pc right in front of me and um so i've made the clue again um but you know the way part two works when you're asked to describe, you're going to give information about the physical features of that thing, um, other you know qualities of that thing, and then of course you take um, the time to talk about how you use it and you know how functional it has been for you. So I'm going to take um, a minute to 
put my thoughts together and I would speak for two minutes. This looks like five minutes into the video, so I should begin to talk by um, about six minutes in and I should, my, my speech in quotes, should last till about eight minutes. Okay, I'd like to talk about my Dell computer, which is a you know a personal computer which I bought at the beginning of the year. That's this year, 2020. I remember that at the time I've been using a small Samsung um, mini laptop, and um, it's it's you know it had certain problems, and so it was time for me to upgrade something bigger. And I remember that this you know um, these problems became unbearable around the start of the lockdown in the country. So I moved very fast and bought a new laptop and um, it was able to help me with my Zoom classes because as an IELTS instructor, I needed to, you know, continue my classes online, you know, as opposed to teaching the physical classes in my office at the time. So I remember that when I got the laptop, um, I paid attention to all the features, you know, the ease of the webcam, that's how easy the um, using the webcam was going to be the size of the screen, you know, using the keyboards conveniently since I was used to a smaller, um, you know, a smaller um, laptop which allowed me to navigate the keys easily. So this time around, I had something with a bigger screen and a wider motherboard. And, you know, I think um, it was quite easy using it, especially because um, my husband also uses a Dell laptop. So many of the things I did not understand, they was able to explain to me. And I remember that um, when I commenced my Zoom classes, you know, I always had a better view as opposed to using my phone or, you know, any other smaller device. It was easier to communicate with my clients. So it was easier to share ideas without feeling like we're into the same location. So it helped me a great deal. And even, you know, as I um, create my YouTube videos, you know, I find it very easy to make use of my laptop because this is eventually what helps me to um, provide better quality as far as visual and audio are concerned. Okay, <laughs> how did I do? So yeah, I was conscious of time. And then um, even though I didn't know all the technical details of the laptop, you know, those RAM, and ROM and all those things. I just didn't bother myself about them because if I tried to pay attention to them, I think I would stutter. You know, I would have stuttered while speaking. So I just focused on what I knew. Okay, I needed it at the start of the lockdown to continue my IELTS classes. Then I got it. Of course, I didn't say the price, which if you want to say your price, good for you. But um, I just add other things to say. So I focused on the fact that, okay, yeah, this is why I needed it. Yes, because that's what the question, you know, said. It says, what device you started using? Why you started using this device? How easy or difficult it was to use? I remember saying that, but I also uses a Dell laptop. So I was um, able to learn with his help. And then um, how helpful, of course, I talked about how easy my Zoom classes were and how creating my YouTube videos has also been easy because that's what I use. So, um... You see that I tried to cover everything in part two, and that's what you do when you do a part two question. Don't bother yourself with the details you don't know. You just dwell on what you know and try to stay coherent. Give your information, um, try to sound authentic, um, and as much as possible, just flow. Just flow. Don't um, don't bother yourself about what you don't know, because if if it happened that you were going to talk about um, something, you know, bigger. Let's say you got. Uh, like i don't know but some other kind of big device and then you don't know all the technical information are you going to freeze while speaking you don't want to freeze and you don't want to sound hesitant while talking you just want to flow so as much as possible when you do your part two um in the aisle speaking 
try to just stay calm and enjoy it. Okay, so that's it for part two. Now let's move on to part three. So the first question, the first three questions are related to technology and education. And the first one says, what is the best age for children to start computer lessons? What is the best age for children to start computer lessons? I think that um, children in primary school, let's say from the age of four or five, can begin to use, let's say, tablets and, um, you know, um, spend some time on the computer in school. And that's because the world is fast moving on. And then you find that um, in as much as paper and pen are still useful, there's so much, you know, that children can do on, you know, the laptop or the computer. So I believe that, you know, as from that age, children can begin to be taught how to use the computer. For example, I know that some schools in my state recommend that children have mini laptops, okay? Children in primary schools have mini laptops so that when they are taught um, speaking lessons, they can actually listen to this on their, that they can listen to the sounds on their laptops and then, you know, do assignments at home um, using their laptops, okay? That's the first question. The second one says, do you think that schools should use more technology to help children learn? Do you think that schools should use more technology to help children learn? Well, it looks like I just answered that in the previous question, but let's not bother about it. Do you think that schools should use more technology to help children learn? So, you know, um, if you ask me, I believe that um, schools indeed should involve the use of um, technology and computers in the education of children and this is because this is what you find happening in other parts of the world you find that nobody is just limited to the chalkboard and textbooks you find that people want to consult the internet for updated information and make sure that children can also access this on their own so yes if schools and you know school management decide that okay yes um Let's say two hours weekly, children can be in the um, computer laboratory. It means that um, they would gradually develop the skills needed to be, you know, tech savvy as time goes on. Okay, so I did give my response. I supported it and then I gave my example to say, okay, let's do, if you're doing two hours in a week, children spend about how many hours? They do from 8 to like 2 p.m. and then they do like till 4 p.m. So yes, if you have two hours in the entire week, it's not so bad. Okay, so the next question. Do you agree or disagree that computers will replace teachers one day? Do you agree or disagree that computers will, will replace teachers one day? I don't believe that um, teachers will become... Um, the place of teachers will become eliminated as time goes on because computers have come to stay. No, what we have is computers have their roles and teachers have their roles. Now, imagine a, um, a classroom where, you know, you have children who are less than three. A computer cannot org the child and make the child feel affirmed or assured that, you know, he or she has done the right, you know, pick the correct answer. Only a teacher can give an org or can give a tap on the hand or do that, um, give that extra human um, attitude and no computer can do that. So in as much as computers are super efficient, we still need teachers, we still need actual human beings in the education system. Okay, did that sound good? <laughs> I'm actually thinking on the spot. None of this is rehearsed. I don't like to come here rehearsed like I have my answers. And that's the thing, when you do your speaking test, even if you have practiced so many questions, you don't want to go before the examiner and sound like a robot because maybe the question you meet on your cue card or you know the questions the examiner asks you are questions that you have come across some time before and yes indeed some questions are repeated yes they have a lot of questions in the IELTS but some questions are repeated I remember that um, I took my IELTS test in 2017 and um, my my um, questions I eventually found them when I began to train people I found my questions, my speaking questions in book six, that's the Cambridge IELTS book six, and also in Cambridge IELTS book 10. And um, I didn't have access to any of this during the time of my preparation, my IELTS preparation. So um, even if you've seen your question, even if you remember seeing you know, your questions before, 
don't try to rehearse them and um, memorize them and then you come before the examiner and you just pour them out you don't want to do that just be natural these questions are not they're not from the moon so you you figure them out actually okay so the final three questions now are related to technology and society how much has technology improved how we communicate with each other how much has technology improved how we communicate with each other communication these days has become very easy and that's because we now have so many social media platforms to interact with our friends and families and even colleagues we have facebook instagram twitter linkedin and many others i find that these platforms help us to stay in touch with our friends we can celebrate celebrate events with them even when we're not in the same places you know um, as they are and somehow you just find that life is easier our telephones you know our laptops make it easy for us to just connect with people without being in the same location and i think it's one of the best things that you know technology has given to us in these times okay why was i sounding serious <laughs> okay so next question now do you agree that there are still many more major technological innovations to be made do you agree that there are still many more major technological innovations to be made yes i i think that you know there's still so much that technology can do for humanity for example i know that already we have homes where you just have to stand you know right there at the porch and then the door is open for you or you don't have to hold your remote when you want to turn on the tv you can do that on your smartphone so we have all of those but think about um you know something where your there's a device that can move you from inside your house to your office without you actually walking or you know doing any actual um performing any actual activity so i believe that we're going to get to that stage where technology will do more you know there will be new inventions to make human life easier okay and then on to the final question could you suggest some reasons why some people are deciding to reduce their use of technology could you suggest some reasons why some people are deciding to reduce their use of technology okay um, one reason I know people no longer want to spend so much time with their phones or their laptops is the fact that it can actually be addictive. And what I mean is, you find that some people spend several hours on their phones chatting or receiving calls or surfing the internet. And many times, this prevents them from spending time with their loved ones. For example, you have homes where the the wife spends so much time on her phone talking to friends and she's rarely available to spend time with her children or with her husband and you know the fact that it can be this act addictive is why some people say okay today i'm going to spend a total of one hour on my laptop or a total of two hours on my phone and at you know probably 8 p.m i'm going to turn off my phone and put it in the drawer and that's it so that's one reason another reason is the fact that um i know that science has said that the the rays that come from the phone that the the light you know that comes out of the phone can be um damaging to the eye so you find that if you don't have the blu-ray filters you're actually exposing yourself to um eyesight problems so some people just want to prevent such from happening to them and that's why they decide to spend um, as little time as possible on these gadgets so those are two main reasons i think people want to spend less time with technology <laughs> okay so thank you we've come to the end of the speaking test that's it so as i told you this is cambridge ielts book 13 and this is test 2 we did an ielts speaking test practice test on page 53 and i hope that um in as much as my responses were were not perfect in that sense i tried to give you a picture of what you should you know do like a like a framework for how to respond to questions right from part one through part two and finally to part three so i hope that you did learn i hope you enjoyed it don't forget that if you want to get better at speaking english writing reading or listening to english you can visit englishniger.com you'll find the link in my description box please make sure you check and if you want to take the mock test the ielts mock test 
visit takeielts.net you'll find the link in my in my um <laughs> description as well finally don't forget to subscribe if you enjoyed this video please like it and leave a comment all right then see you in the next one bye bye